So here we have our reading settings for WordPress. And as we discussed earlier, there's two ways of, of doing it. You can actually set it up in customization on the front end using the live customizer that we looked at earlier, or you can choose a static page and then choose your home page from there. So that's two different ways of doing that. And then you can choose, if you, on your blog page, if you have one, and I highly recommend that you do have a blog page because Google rewards websites that have dynamic content. If your content is static and nothing changes on it at all, then Google will recognize that and it will actually demote you in terms of your Google ranking. So your SEO is going to be poor. Whereas if you're constantly refreshing your content with fresh, interesting blog posts or, or other content, then Google rewards you for that and you're more likely to feature higher up in the Google ranking. Okay, so we have a few options here when it comes to the WordPress reading settings. So we can either display our latest post or a static page as we've discussed previously. And we can decide how many posts are shown in a blog feed. So here we have it set at 10. You can have as many or as few as you want. But once we start using flats, and you'll see that the options for customizing the blog and making it look really beautiful become so much greater. For each article in the feed, you can choose whether there'll be a full text or a summary. And for that to work, you need to actually write an extract in your blog post settings. And again, we'll show you that in more detail when we write a blog post. And you have the option to hide pages from being indexed by the, the um, box. Um, but I would leave this open to being indexed um, because if you don't, it's only gonna affect your SEO anyway. Um, it's important that, that Google indexes your site. So I would just leave that um, because in any event, even if you don't, then search engines can still index anyway. They don't, don't always respect your request here not to be indexed. Now we have discussion. And there's various choices here. So, um, my feeling, let's have a look, attempt. I don't like to get too many notifications because it's a pain. And you can actually, um, a much more sophisticated way to um, prevent being overloaded and server being overloaded by lots of um, spam is to set up particular plugins that I'll talk to you about so that you can make sure that what you are getting in terms of comments is legitimate. So you can on a global basis though prevent anyone commenting on articles if you so wish. Otherwise you can make them fill out their name and email which is a smart thing to do. And um, there's various other things you can do to control who can comment on your articles. And we will talk about comment spam and contact form spam later on because that's also really important. I don't want people emailing me every time there's a comment because so yeah, for me, I'm a little too busy for that, but that's something that you can keep there if you so wish. And there's various other things you can do to make the process a little less time consuming, as you can see here. And if you get lots of comments spam, then you can write down the IP address here of whoever is spamming you, and then WordPress will prevent them continuing to do so. I personally prefer to automate this with a decent plugin that can pick up and determine what's spam and what's not. Um, to do it manually is quite time consuming. And we have avatars. You can choose whether you want a mystery person. You can go for a Gravatar logo, which is what I generally do. So that's a centrally organized um, 
Gravatar page where you can upload a logo that you want to be displayed anywhere that you have a presence. And then there's various other different ones that you can choose from if that floats your boat.